Hello, what is up guys and welcome to sadly the last part, part 5 of Move to PC Gaming. This one is all about turning that hardware that you've now got and actually turning it into a PC that can actually play your games, which is the most important thing and it is the thing that obviously you've been striving all this time to actually get doing, playing some games on your new machine. Now you may have noticed that this guide hasn't actually included a PC build guide and so it's almost like something's been missed out. Unfortunately at the moment, um, as previously discussed in another video, that isn't really an option at the moment. However, if you do want a clear and concise video on how to build your own PC, then you can find one by Linus Tech Tips in the description below. That should pretty much teach you everything you need to know about building a PC. As much as I'd like to do one, I don't think it would currently be as clear and concise as I would like it to be and I, as I think you need it to be. So now you've got your PC, it's all built or you've got it pre-built and it's pretty much ready to go. All you need to do now is install Windows and then move on and install everything else. Obviously if you've already installed Windows or, or it's, maybe it's pre-installed then skip this step because obviously you don't need to install Windows twice. Now to install Windows all you need to do is get a copy of Windows. Um, this is normally done by buying a CD and that will come with a license key. But if you don't have a CD drive or you want to use a USB stick, then the thing to do is get that CD, or well, that DVD, and then you need to use another computer and you actually need to burn the ISO onto a USB drive. If you don't know how to do this, then again, there is a guide in the description below that will tell you how to do this, but it's essentially just getting your copy of Windows on a device, so a DVD or a USB drive. But the most important thing is that you have a unique license key, because this gets tied to every single motherboard and unless you buy a standard version rather than the OEM version then that's always tied to your motherboard and you can't actually uninstall that you do need a fresh key for every new build if you're not sure what you've got you've probably got an OEM one already so pretty much just assume that you do need to buy a new copy of Windows now to install Windows all you need to do is you need to get your copy of Windows so be it a USB or DVD drive you need to power on your PC and you need to insert it so obviously the USB stick goes into the USB drive or the CD or DVD goes into the DVD drive. Once you've done that you should see your BIOS on screen and they all look pretty different but they all fundamentally do the same thing. Now there are loads of different things to tweak in there and I won't go over all that stuff in this video because usually the defaults will serve you fine and unless you know what you're doing you probably should leave the settings alone. But the thing you need to do is once you're in your BIOS you need to go to boot order or boot override preference or whatever it is on your particular motherboard BIOS. And you need to basically just boot into the device you've just inserted. So under boot order or boot override priority, again, whatever it is, you need to set the thing with Windows on it to the top. So you need either your USB drive to be the top thing or your DVD drive to be the top thing. Once you've done this, then you just need to press enter or then you need to press, is it F9? Anyway, you need to save and exit. And then it will boot into the thing that you've just told it it needs to boot into. So you'll either hear your DVD drive spinning up or it will just go straight into the USB drive and it will come up with a little Windows logo and then after a minute or so, sometimes it's a bit less, then you'll see a little screen that will tell you how to install Windows. It will say install Windows. You need to click install and then you need to select the drive where you want it on. Um, if, you're, if you've got an SSD, you need to make sure that your SSD is selected as the thing that you're using. Don't be alarmed if it says that you have unallocated space, that probably just means you've got a brand new drive. So you just need to click format on that and then you need to create a new volume, give it the maximum amount of space, you don't need to worry about partitioning that at the moment, you can do that later on if you need to. 10 to 20 minutes later and Windows will have installed. The next thing is the tedious bit. Installing Windows ironically was actually the most difficult bit. The thing to do now is the tedious bit which is to install all your drivers. Now Windows tries to be a little bit clever and any devices it can find a driver for it will automatically install or use a somewhat basic driver. However you've got high end kit, you don't want to do this. The first thing you need to do is to use your internet connection to get some new drivers. If you don't have a driver installed already for um, your ethernet connection or your Wi-Fi connection or however you're connecting to the internet you will need to use a USB drive or a CD that came with your motherboard to install the driver to actually get on the internet. If you've got a non-DVD drive based computer 
then you'll need to have these on a USB drive and you'll need to use another computer to get hold of this driver if you can't do that. But again, unless you haven't got any other computer, that shouldn't be a big deal. Once you can connect to the internet, it's obviously a case of getting your internet browser of choice installed and then you want to sort out stuff like video drivers as that's the most important thing and then all your displays should work properly and you'll actually be able to play some games. Once you've got your browser and your video card drivers installed it's a case of installing all the drivers for everything else and this really is the tedious bit. Now the easiest way to do it is to write a list of obviously all your different bits that you've got on your machine but for stuff like the motherboard and then your processor and stuff like that you can just go on the manufacturer's website same for everything in your PC and then just click on drivers and for the motherboard it will have a list of all these things that you'll need to install so it's just a case of downloading all of them and installing them and then the same for everything else be it a mouse, a keyboard, whatever it is it will probably need a driver for. If you're wondering why you need to download all these drivers online rather than using the ones on disk well, you don't have to, but the reason you should do is because the ones on the disc will be the oldest driver, will be the first drivers that came out with your device. And there are almost certainly newer drivers that will work better, have less bugs, or it, basically they will be better. So for the sake of your PC, and obviously for the sake of you, make sure you get all the latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. That is a big must do. Now obviously once you've actually got a new PC, you do want to get gaming and it can be tempting to skip a few steps. Now the easiest thing to do, firstly don't skip any steps, the easiest thing to do and the thing that I always do is when I'm getting a new PC or new parts I will pre-install the drivers, well not pre-install, I'll download all the drivers and stick them on a USB external drive. That way I'm all ready to go. Once my machine's all set up I can just plug in my USB drive and then install all the drivers without having to faff about getting them all online because I've already done the boring tedious bit while I've been waiting for the parts to arrive. Once all your drivers are installed that's the boring tedious bit done. Next you need to get a list of core programs that pretty much any gaming PC should have. Exhibit A Steam, Exhibit B Origin and Exhibit C Uplay. If you haven't heard of these before or you're wondering why you need all three of them it is quite annoying I know basically Steam is the big service that you've probably heard of that has all pretty much all games on it except for Uplay titles and Origin titles. Both of them require Origin or Uplay depending on whether it's EA or Ubisoft. Um, Uplay is slightly nicer because you can still buy them from Steam but the only way to get Origin games is through the Origin client or buying them from a third party. You can't get them through Steam so if you want to be able to play every game which I'm sure you do you're going to need the whole suite unfortunately. The last two things you need is a copy of CC Cleaner. What this does is it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It cleans your PC and gets rid basically of a load of crap. Internet Explorer is one of those particular things that even if you never use it, it can still get a load of temporary files and it deletes loads of stuff like that that you don't really know exists. And it's a good thing to have on your PC just because it keeps it nice and clear and it is an easy way to access all your uninstallers. Other than that, the last thing you need to do is get any overlays, frame rate counters or temperature gauges and stuff like that like EVG, uh, EVGA Precision X or anything like that. So if your graphics card is MSI, you might want to get MSI Afterburner, stuff like that. Core Temp is another good one. It's a good way of managing your core temperature of your PC, so your processor temps and just loads of stuff like that. If you want any monitoring software, then you should get hold of that now. Now you've got hold of all of those, it's time to do one more step that some people don't do and they will regret it later. And that is you need to go into your hard drive or your SSD or both and you need to create a games folder. So what I do is I create one on my SSD called SSD, SSD Games and I create one on my hard drive called Primary Games. Obviously you can change the names up a bit. I also have one on another hard drive somewhere called Secondary Games but I never really use that. The point is if you keep a nice place um, to put all your games on your PC then you're going to know where they are if you ever need to access the files or see whether they are installed or not. If you do that now it, it's going to be pretty easy to maintain a nice clean library later. So once you've made these folders it's then a case of going into again the big three Steam, Origin and Uplay and directing them all to install games into those folders that you've just said. That way all your games are going to be in one place and it's going to be nice and easy to manage. Now it's definitely worth noting that if you want to install games onto your SSD, Steam makes it very easy to do that. 
what I will do is I click on install and then it gives me a choice of places where to install it. So it says here create a new Steam library on E or G or under D primary game Steam or under C program file Steam. So I can do that. However, with the other two, it's a bit more difficult and you need to manually change the install directory each time. So if you want to install most of your games on your standard hard drive, then every time you want to put it on your SSD, you then have to go into the settings and change it to install onto your SSD and then change it back again once you want it onto your normal hard drive. And this is very tedious indeed, but obviously if you want games on two different hard drives, that's the way it has to be done, unfortunately. Now it's just a case of actually getting hold of your games, buying them and installing them. You can either use a storefront through one of these three, or you can go on a third party seller online. So places like CD Keys or Green Man Gaming or Amazon, there's loads of different places, not just those three, where you can legitimately get cheaper copies of your games. You're just getting a CD key, then you activate again in one of these three, and then you install them through the regular client. It's pretty much one extra step, and it's you can definitely get some cheaper games, so I definitely recommend you do some shopping around for your games, just like you're used to doing for console games, really. Once you've actually bought your games, they do get tied to your account. And again, in each of these different services respectively. And that way it means you can download them on any PC you have now or you get in the future. And it's a good way of making sure that you get cheaper games in the first place because PC games are cheaper. And because you can't actually trade them in, it's kind of a nice thing because it means you actually get this nice big library built up. I mean, just look at the size of some of these. Like This is, this is my Steam library. It's getting pretty ridiculous now for size and there's just loads of games everywhere games 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 and the fact that you can't trade them in I quite like to be honest because I'm getting them cheaper in the first place and it means that if I want to go back and play them later I can so using these services is very easy to do and it's just a it's just a case it's just a case of clicking on your game clicking install and waiting for it and waiting for it to install once you've got hold of your games, it's a case of hitting the play button, going into the settings menu and changing all the settings to your heart's content. It's pretty simple, if you turn up a setting, quality will go up at cost of performance, and that is of course frames per second. So it's just a case of tailoring that to what your PC is capable of and pretty much your personal settings. You can have it at a higher quality running at 30 frames a second, or you can have it at a lower quality running at a higher frame rate. Again, the trade-off is up to you, but it's all about tailoring it to what your graphics card and your processor is actually capable of doing. GeForce Experience is a great way of actually doing this without having to do any of it yourself. AMD's Gaming Evolved app also does a similar job. What both of them do is they tailor the graphics settings to what your PC is capable of without you having to do anything yourself. It is worth noting that you have to launch the game though before you can actually use these settings because when you launch the game it creates this any file that has all your settings in it and then the application will just change those settings depending on your PC's capability. And just like that, we are gaming on a PC. That wasn't really that difficult at all, was it? Now, hopefully you've realised how simple it can be to actually get a P gaming PC up and running. Obviously there has been quite a few steps to this guide, but don't worry about it. They are, there is, well, there's more steps, but overall it is quite simple to do, and I hope this guide has been useful and simple in showing you that. Now there are a ridiculous amount of ways that you can arguably optimise your PC, purchase stuff and improve your PC, but this guide has kept it quite nice and simple and gone over all the stuff that you actually need to do to get a nice, efficient, well-running gaming PC. So I hope it has been clear and concise. Don't forget to check out the PC-centric rig section just below this video that has loads of build guides if you haven't actually got hold of a PC yet that can help you choose all the parts you need to get a PC that is, of course, tailored to any and every budget. So thank you very, very much for watching this series. It's been great to have you along, and I hope it's been very useful and, like I say, clear and concise. There will be a part zero, so like a prologue to this video, if obviously you haven't seen that already. Um, that will be due next Friday, and obviously if it's after that time, then it will, will already be live, and hopefully you will have already seen it. And that will just go over why you should get into gaming in PC gaming in the first place. So other than that, thank you very much for watching. Like this video if it's been useful, and like hopefully all the videos in the series if you've thought they've all been useful. Likewise, if this one hasn't been very useful or none of them have been useful, 
and you, I don't know, you think my house should fall down, then hit the dislike button and hopefully that won't happen. Um, but you'll feel free to express yourself. And subscribe for more videos on PCs, gaming and technology. And of course other long series like this. I'll close this video and of course this series with some fans sent in images of their own PC rigs and setups. So if you're not a PC gamer already, why not join them? Thank you very much for watching this video, thank you very much for watching this series, and thank you for sticking with PC-centric, it is much appreciated, and I will see you in the next video.